Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I have to adjust everything because I'm tall. Okay. So I'm gonna go, we're going to go from macro to a little bit of micro. All right, we're going to dive from approach to something we specifically build into our designs, which is navigation. But I'm going to start that at the macro level, too. Um, it's not just about the boxes and the lines. There's a whole philosophy behind this. So I have to mention that a lot of the work that you're going to see today came from a wonderful opportunity I had back in 2006-2007 uh, when I was working at the Vanguard Group. Uh, basically, they paid me for a year to do nothing but build the navigation standard that they would then use. So I got to do research and study and dig into this topic and, and, and we broke it down uh, down to the link and all the way back up to how, how navigation works and how we should think about it. This is me. Uh, feel free to, <laughs> that picture, by the way, it's funny, everyone's like, oh, that's, where did you get that taken and who took that? Uh, I was sitting at the beach and I was just kind of took off my glasses and I was squinting and straining my eyes. And I looked and I noticed my wife, it was just held out her camera and went snap, like not even just framed it. Oh, what are you doing? Turn, I use that for everything now. So <laughs> that's me. That's my rap album cover. Um, so I, I was trying to think of, of, a, of the hashtag for the day. Um, first, I thought, what the heck is this guy saying? Who invited this guy? But uh, if you use... Uh, W-I-A-D-L-A nav. I will look at that later. If you have questions, uh, feel free and I'll uh, answer anything. So first a bit about me. I have been a computer geek since my family got a TRS-80 back in 1978. I was fluent in basic. I've been an anthropologist since 1995. Uh, and I've been an information architect since uh, 2000. And the reason I bring these two things up is these are the two, well, I brought up the geek thing just to show off, but um, <laughs> I bring up information architecture and anthropology purposefully because I think when building navigation and thinking about structure, the, those two are, are incredibly important. And although uh, I don't have my name on the front of any books, um, a lot of the work I'm going to be talking about today was cited um, in both of these uh, and probably better than I'm going to explain it. So let's start with uh, information architecture uh, as the foundation. And this is Dan Klein. And uh, he has a, a wonderful way uh, of explaining uh, information architecture. He talks about it having three parts. And the first part is ontology. And he describes this as how we define and, and articulate the rules and the patterns that are going to govern the meaning that we want to communicate, right? The second part he explains is the taxonomy, and this is, it's labeling. It's what we call things. It's how we organize things. It's, it's but, and this is one of the keys, it's the relationships between the labels and those categories. And that all comes together in choreography. And this is where there's this movement and this interaction and it's both the information and the user, and making affordances for this movement to happen and change over time. Three key parts. So let's talk about anthropology for a minute, because uh, I love to, and you have no choice but to listen to me. Specifically, I'm talking about linguistic anthropology. Uh, this is one of the fields that I, I particularly focused in uh, when I went to Temple University. Um, and here, I'm focusing in on just one part of the definition of linguistic anthropology, which is the practices of language use that equip people with common cultural representations of their natural and social worlds. And I know that's a lot of SAT words up there. But uh, what they're talking about is, they're talking about language as a common source of meaning. And language, is primarily, uh, it's symbols. Words are symbols. But it could also be other things as well. Cultural meaning systems are encoded in those symbols. And that language, that's the primary symbol system that encodes that cultural meaning in every society. Right? That's a common thing for humanity. 
And the meaning of any particular symbol is actually its relationship to the other symbols that are part of that uh, particular culture. And the task of ethnography is to decode the cultural symbols and identify those underlying coding rules. And this is accomplished by discovering, again, relationships among those cultural symbols. Right? So much like uh, Dan Klein's definition of information architecture, anthropology is trying to do the same thing. And the reason I bring this up is because this is what we, we're trying to do, is to get at that, those rules and those relationships in order to make navigation work for people. So the two things come together in navigation. Navigation is its choreography. And that choreography is facilitated by the relationships between those symbols. Navigation is actually how we communicate the meaning to the user, right? That's how they understand what we are trying to tell them, is through those words and symbols. And it's the relationships that are critical, right? And these are the relationships I'm talking about. This is basic uh, library science 101. It's equivalence, hierarchy, and there's some sort of associative relationship. And everything that we do in navigation communicates those three things. So it's a bit of library science. I'll let that soak in. That's, if you're laughing, you're probably old like me. Or a librarian. Or a librarian. <laughs> <laughs> so let's dig into the nuts and bolts of navigation. At the heart of navigation is the link. Now, the link may look like a button, the link may look like a picture, the link may look like some other form of affordance, but essentially there is an element on the page that connects two things and expresses the relationship between two things. You are on point A and you see a link that is going to take you to point B. It's pretty elementary. But when you put a bunch of links together, what you're really doing is you're actually talking about the relationship of all of those parts. So when you put all of these links in a drop down or on the side or wherever, however you've decided to organize them, what you're really saying is all of these things share uh, some form, we're gonna communicate some form of common relationship with all the pages where they're heading. And when you have two navigation systems on a page, really what you're saying is there's a set of relationships and we have this other set of relationships and there's a good a differentiator between the two. What's the difference between those things that have gone across the top of our page in tabs and the little box we put over here on the right and this little list we put on the left? It gets back to those, those core relationships between those terms. This is how people understand what you're trying to say. They need to be able to differentiate between the systems that you put on a page and the, word, you know, the labels that you're trying to express. There's three basic types of links. Ooh, this slide didn't work. Oh, there we go. There's the structural links, right? And these are your typical global nav, header, side nav, those kinds of things. And what they're doing is that that is telling the user, explaining and communicating to them the meaning that you want to, ex that you want to express about the structure of your site, right? The semantic uh, proxi or the organizational proximity. Of those, of those items. But sometimes you want to connect uh, some things that have a relationship but are not necessarily structurally connected and those links are associative and they're cross links and things like that, right? So there what you're, what you're saying is you're getting back to that associative relationship. A and B have some sort of commonality and we want to point that out. And finally there's uh, links that just point out utilities. These are sort of the meta uh, macro things like uh, contact forms and sitemaps and what have you. Now, this looks like boxes and lines, and you're, you know, it, it, it's hard to, to picture this without the words or labels. But this is, uh, getting back to the anthropology for a moment, this is a representation. And in order to present a common representation to a user, you've got to be able to know that person's native perspective. What words, what labels, what structures can I use to communicate to them that they will understand, right? 
So navigation is more than just those words and links. No matter how you slice it, your navigation on your site is doing these three things and only these three things. Now, I know sometimes links make forms work, right? Those are really controls. And this is one of the things where it gets a little mushy. Uh, things like buttons uh, to tabulate a form or uh, pagination controls, things that just change the view or manipulate, um, uh, manipulate a, a data set, let's say. Those things, set them aside for a minute because that is operation. That's how your site is going to work. Wayfinding and navigation is about understanding uh, the totality of what you're trying to present to, to the end user. And those things are only going to work in that particular way. So don't panic. <laughs> you can ask any of the questions you want. Uh, just again, use the tag uh, WIADLANAV and I'll be happy to answer. Thank you.